guys, welcome back to the Cambridge United RTG. We are in the January transfer window here with the latest episode in season three. And we start on the field very, very well indeed. We've been in good form of late, picking up wins, the occasional draw, but mainly wins throughout the month of December. And very pleased with that. Frustrated to pick up the draws against Wigan and Sheffield Wednesday, but it is what it is. Points get dropped throughout the course of a season. That's to be expected. We do have potentially some plans in this January transfer window with regards to changes to the squad. Currently, we sit third in the table, a point off Charlton in second, so very much in the automatic promotion hunt. But with regards those potential changes to the squad for this January window, I am contemplating using Oli Burke as a backup striker and signing a starting left winger. We'll wait and see what happens throughout the course of the window. We've already lost George Honeyman. I say lost. We purposefully misplaced him. We sold him and he's gone now. So I'm potentially looking for a central midfielder as well. Probably a backup cam in all honesty. So Oli Burke to backup striker as well, alongside Elliot List who could also be used up top as well. And from there, I'm going to look to try and buy someone. We have about £8 million available to us, which is plenty enough for the level that we're at. We have a number of names on the shortlist of players we might be looking into as well. Tudozi Ogbene destroyed me for Rotherham in the last game that we played against him. So I'm just intrigued in seeing how good he is. Uh, we've obviously Patrick Roberts here, as you see, former Celtic man and Manchester City man off the top of my head. Uh, there's Lewis Morgan, who's got five-star week for out at uh, New York Red Bulls. Intru intrigued to see how good he actually is. Obviously, Alex Scott has been on the shortlist for a little while and now up to 72 rated. Slightly more expensive, although we should be able to get him for about valuation. Although those wages are quite high, as you saw. Oliver Cooper's probably not good enough at this stage, so I'm going to remove him from the list. One player I'm particularly intrigued about is Jack Crudoni at Wimbledon. Really think he could potentially be a very good acquisition. Scouting also Taylor Wasgar, uh, as well as Ayub Asal, also of Wimbledon, actually. He looks very quick, actually. Connor Chaplin could be a very good go-to as well from Ipswich. Luke McCormick, another Wimbledon man that could be potentially worth a look. Karamoko Dembele, probably more so on loan. Looks like they're not going to be willing to sell him, so that kind of takes him out of the question then, doesn't it? And then Harry Cornick is a player that can play out wide. Luton is struggling in the in the championship above, and uh, I think we might be able to justify going for him, depending on, obviously, I've got other priorities, but he's definitely an option for us. And then an even younger option, Harvey Vale, who at the moment is unwilling to relocate, but could be someone we could look at to loan next year if we get promoted to the championship, which is, of course... The aim this season. So we shall crack on. We've got Reading in the Cup to begin with. And a loan bid come in for Terry here, which is exactly what we were hoping would happen. Not a loan to buy, however. Just a loan. And fingers crossed he can progress at the same sort of rate that Shedler did when he went out on loan for uh, the rest of a league season. Like I say, Reading first in the FA Cup. We're going to sim that. Our sole priority this year, I think, has to be the league table. Then we'll play Oxford, we'll play Sunderland, we'll play Plymouth and Sim Burton as they currently are at the bottom of the the, uh, the league table. Uh, we'll Sim it with the rotated 11 who actually are quite tired actually, but obviously prioritising the uh, the first string players. It's only a narrow 1-0 defeat to Reading as well, which is actually a very, uh, very respectable result for us, especially with that 11 as well. We could potentially have made it through had I uh, played my full strength team, but... Uh, I want to make sure that those fringe players get the first team football that they are after in the uh, rotated side for games that don't take massive priority. Uh, they are going to... I'm not seeing that yet. No, a two-year loan. Oh, that could be very good, actually. A two-year loan. Now then, a bid for Shadler from Nottingham Forest of £1.9 million. I am looking to improve elsewhere in those wide roles, but I would prefer to keep Shadler, I think, for the time being because... He is a player that could really crack on with regards to his growth and potentially turn into a decent player for the team. I'd be more open to letting Ben Warman go. Where are Forrest? Are they struggling at the bottom of the championship? I feel relatively happy enough rejecting that bid, actually, for the Jonas Schädler. They're not 
massively better than us at this particular moment in time, Nottingham Forest. And Shedler is getting a decent amount of first team football here. And he wouldn't get any more first team football at Nottingham Forest than he's getting here. So quite happy to continue with him on in that role. Still continually waiting for Glint to turn, or Wilt, sorry, to turn 16. Terry's turned down the move. That's intriguing. At the beginning of the episode, or before... Oh, I did! Yes! 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 I was going to say, at the beginning of the episode, just before I started recording, I checked and he was 15. Oh, never have I been so happy for someone to turn 16 before. Michael Gwilt, 69 rated, promotes to the senior team. Oh, praise the bloody Lord. Get him into my starting lineup ahead of Lloyd-Jones. Jones can go to the bench and other Lloyd can drop out. Gwilt is here. Wilt has arrived. It is time for him to improve and carry on the growth in our centre-back positions. He's just as good as Lloyd-Jones defensively. Basically just as quick. Better shooting, better passing, better dribbling. Not quite as good physically, but has 12 years in hand on him. At last. Cooper's up to 72 as well, which is great news. Coles is up to 72 as well as he continues to grow really well. Oh, that's just perfect. That's already like getting a new signing already we haven't even uh, gone much further into the window right we'll go and play oxford i'll adjust oh no we won't go and play oxford yet we've got some scout reports to look through look through those scout reports and a couple look good a couple slightly not and still waiting on a couple more scout reports as well so once we've got all of them back i shall show you in depth what we're looking at in those particular positions. Jack Stevens in goal for Oxford in a full 3-3 with Bradley Hayward, a regen at right back. Luke McNally, Elliot Moore and Steve Seddon round out their back line. Marcus McGuan, Cameron Brannigan, who's very good, and Oisin, or Oisin Smith in the middle with Mark Sykes on the right. Marcus Brown on the left, very good at 71 rated. And Stefan Schimmer through the middle. Gwilt makes his long-awaited debut. Both left-footed centre-backs. Wilt, 16 years of age, six foot three, potential to be special. Let's see what he's all about. We have waited a long time to get him into our team. 90 to 94 potential. Please don't be shit. Brown, nicely into Shimmer. Brown is going again and will be found again. Marcus Brown, neither keeper really drawn into any real... Meaningful save so far in this game. Haywood played in and down the line there to Sykes. Gwilt is with him. Can't get close. Shimmer back to Maguane. Shimmer again. Cooper makes the save. That was really well done. Brannigan to deliver the set piece for Oxford as we look for the first goal of the game. Or they look for the first goal of the game. I'm not necessarily looking for the first goal of the game. Thank you, Josh Key. Clearing the ball off the line to ensure that there isn't the first goal of the game. At least not yet. It might come now. Brown around the corner. Shimmer is there again, as is Cooper to make another good stop. Oxford turning the screw, trying to get themselves a 1-0 lead. Here is the home side before half-time. But my goalkeeper has other ideas. Thank you very much. Brian with the floated ball over the top. You can see the possession stats top left. We've had a lot of the ball in this first half. Not really... Oh, that was really bad. We've not really done anything with it. Nice tackle by Brian. We could do something with it now. Elijah Stone looking for Joey. Trying to wrong-foot the defenders that are around him. Support is arriving. Here's Ollie Burke. Through that gap is Stone. Oh, come on. I'm building my move there. We are yet to test their goalkeeper in this game. First half has been a bit of a slow mover. Not much to bring to you from it, unfortunately. I have had one shot, which wasn't very good. They've had three, which were better, but still Cooper able to deal with all of them to this point. Nil-nil thus far. A win could get us into the top two today. Paul Pogba to Tottenham Hotspur. Transfer confirmed, apparently. That was good footwork there from Sykes. And Maguan has been found. Smith, Shimmer, Marcus Brown. Good save by Cooper. Brown might get to the loose ball again. He has done, but he's kicked it only against Cooper for a second time. Who will bowl this out quickly. Right, we need to sharpen up in the final third because we've had nothing in this game so far. That is a hell of a ping. Oh, we'll take the advantage. Sh um... Stone got caught there. They're making a change now as Baldock comes on. It was Smith that picks up the yellow card for them. Stone out wide. Quick one too with Lancaster actually. And look at George Chapman through the gap. George! Good save by Stevens. Now we've forced the keeper into a stop. And he's reacted very well indeed. 
Delivery coming in. Underneath this could be Keen Bryant. Jack is underneath this one, though. Oh, that's just literally gone straight up in the air. Win it, please, Jack. He did enough. Is it a free kick for me? It's a free kick for them. Okay. Play the right ball at the right time. And keep it away from them, he says. And then work our way towards goal. Ironside. Need the support. There's Stone. We'll float this out wide to Oli Burke. Chapman is there. Looking to reverse it. Back to Joey. That is what Mr. Ironside is all about. He's the sole reason that we've challenged at the top end of the table every single year. Lovely ball around the corner by George Chapman. And just getting there ahead of the defender. But impressive finish as well from Joe Ironside once he got there. Put his foot right through it. Rode the challenge that came from the defender. Keep in mind, just have gotten a glancing touch on it. Joey is up to 14 goals in 26 games. He's flying for yet another season. And that might be the goal that sees us back into those top two automatic promotion spots. Moore in there to Smith. And across to McGuan. Balled up. Out wide to Marcus Brown. Oh, nearly got there. Nearly got there. This is dangerous from Oxford. We've put, stuck a foot in. They've gone backwards. Ref, do me a favour, please. McGuan. Oh, God. Big save by Cooper at the near post. Thank the Lord for him. Those changes were made ages ago. Adam May on for Chapman. Can we win this header and get rid of it, please? Adam May, please. Get out. Oh, three points, but the old ticker was going there. A win to kickstart the January transfer window in the league. Hoping that those other scout reports will be back sooner rather than later. I was second best for the majority of that game. But defensive solidity. Thank you, Michael Cooper. And Michael Gwilt gets a... What? Why is my manager racing just plummeted into the red? That was in the 90s! Elliot List is quite happy to be on the transfer list, actually, which is good news. Why am I now in the 90s? What is... Why am I... Sorry, now in the 60s? What's that all about? Because we went out of the FA Cup... I've now plummeted in manager rating. Get out. One youth defender. Or well, sign one youth academy. Assigned to a defender position. We, I think we've done that already. Have we, oh no, we're changing it from a, from a CDM to a centre back. Okay. Well, I can easily do that. We've got a 10 game unbeaten streak already this season. So that's that one ticked. We've got the other one ticked there. Financially, I've got four or four. Just need to finish the season without any unspent transfer budget. That's going to be harder to do. Uh, than initially it might look because we don't necessarily need to spend all of that money nor do I really want to spend all of that money because we have players here at the club already that we're wanting to try and see develop. We'll wait and see what happens in the transfer window. Still waiting for a couple more scout reports. So for now, it might be, and indeed it is, time to go and play Sunderland as Jacobs has completed his move to a centre-back and he's only 55 bloody rated when he gets there. Not amazing, not amazing, but we shall... Train as a defensive centre-back, and hopefully it won't be long before his rating starts to rise. Right. Into game number two. Sunderland at home. Sunderland still yet to replace young Anthony Patterson in goal. Huggins on the right. Danny Batt, Callum Doyle and Dennis Serkin. Corey Evans and Lyndon Gooch actually on the right. Matet is in central midfield with Jack Diamond on the left. Embleton at cam and Ross Stewart continuing on up top. We are unchanged from the side that just beat Oxford. So hopefully, that means we can go and beat Sunderland too. Oh, this is good football from Sunderland. I remember last time we played them, they were pretty slick with their free-flowing moves, but Cooper's been very, very good in goal for us since we brought him in and continuing to make the saves there for us. Danny Bat chests that back to Huggins, player we did think about looking at, potentially earlier on in the save, but never actually decided to scout him. But certainly was a suggestion in that Sunderland team. And he's heavily involved in this game so far for his Sunderland team. At right back. Back to Matet again. Sunderland just not letting me rest at all here so far. Serkin dinks it over. Gwilt is up. Stewart wins the header and it will go straight to Cooper. Ta very much. You see all the Sunderland men back here trying to Deny me the space I need to work the opportunity. Conde will look all the way out wide here to Teddy Coles. Try and find the space for a cross, which he has done. And he'll dig one out, and it's a good one too. 
Oh, Jack, he's destroyed the defender aerially. And he's won the header really well indeed. But he can't get it on target. Ollie Burke with a bit of space. I'll try and play him in behind here with Ironside. And Burke's done well to get to it. Teddy Coles is there. I have support short here in Conde. Commit the defender. Look for Elijah Stone. Find George Chapman. He'll look for Elijah Stone. He went to Chapman again and threw there quickly to Joey, who spun his man well. And Lancaster's in behind, looking for Joey. First time shot, saved well by Patterson. Kept in play by Ollie Burke. On the edge of the box, oh, it was Elijah Stone, but for some reason, he tried to play that all the way back to Conde, which has killed the move. Half an hour played so far. Goalkeepers making saves at both ends. No goals yet. Oh, gets that inside nicely. Diamond has runners. I'm worried about this. Embleton. Let's not concede before half-time, gentlemen. Well, let's not concede at all, but certainly not in the latter stages of this first half. Gooch into the middle. It won't let me change player to Gwilt, annoyingly. I had to attack that with... Keen Brian, but thankfully, it didn't cost us anything. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Michael. Lovely, uh, lovely bowling action there. But you are playing football, not cricket, pal. Just to just to remind you. Looks like it's going to be nil nil at half time here as we approach the break, and either side could still win this. It has been a very open game with chances for each offensive unit. Oh, and now there is a goal. Look at the clock. Third minute of one added on. Tucks it back. Oh, the keeper's got to do better. For all of the good saves he's made, he's got to do better with that. It's not far away from him at all. It's literally right next to him. He's got to save that. I'm sorry, that's really poor. Kondo with the ball out wide. Still devastated to have conceded a goal in quite such a fashion at the end of the first half. Looking for redemption. If we can get it in the second 45. Try and work it about as well as I can. Sunderland. Their marking is excellent. As is their possession play when they have the ball. It's just making it really difficult to do anything. Oh! Ollie Burke's finish is not far away. If I put a little bit less power on that. We might start the second half with an immediate equaliser there. Haven't really tested Patterson that much. Gwilt is up for this. Ross Stewart gets the better of him. Talking about Duarte going to Borussia Dortmund. We don't really care about that at the minute. We're concentrating on League One. Thank you very much. Jack Diamond hits that against Conte. Little ball back to Corey Evans. And here's Matet. Moving the ball about nicely. Sunderland. They've got runners. Ross Stewart is in space. And Cooper this time does save. That one more difficult than the one that he conceded. But we can't expect him to save absolutely everything, I suppose. Roberts on for Linden Gooch. Good opportunity to get a view of him in action. Of course, he's on our shortlist. Pump that forward looking for... Why is it Elijah Stone that's left forward? He's done really well to hold up possession, though. Really well indeed. And Ollie Burke could be in here if the pass was even any good at all. I get lucky. I get really lucky. And Joey doesn't miss these. What? Not even on target. Unmarked in the box. What? My keeper concedes in the manner that he does. And then my main striker misses like that. It's not meant to be our day, gentlemen. I still can't believe Joey Ironside missed that one-on-one. -on -one. I don't even, I don't even miss the target. That's just uh, really, really unexpected. The way he took his goal against Oxford, you'd have surely expected him to at least get it on target and work the goalkeeper with that effort. I think it's going to end up being just one of those games here. Oli Burke wins that well. And Teddy Coles. Quickly out wide to Oli Burke again. Oh, his touch is super heavy. Takes it straight to the Sunderland man. It's looking like one of those games, gentlemen. Teddy Coles does well to win that back after the Sunderland man has a very heavy touch. We'll switch this to the right-hand side. And Lancaster's away. Josh Key will get it to him. Support here from Elijah Stone. Chapman's gone. He's in. Come on, George. Thank you, George. Yes, Georgie Chapman. One bloody one, boys. We will get our equaliser. And good footwork from Molly. Taking it slowly. Elijah Stone to Chapman. They're backing off him. I wound up for the shot, as you can see. Can Conde win this? He's done brilliantly. Absolutely superbly. Chapman will look over the top for Lancaster, who is in behind. Jack Lancaster tucking it back. 
all I could really do there. And unfortunately, there was a Sunderland man in between Jack Lancaster and Joey Ironside. Here's Ross Stewart, forced backwards. Five minutes to go. Any goal now would win it, surely. Any goal now would win it. They've got a man over. This is really dangerous. Don't like it. Embleton with a shot. Cooper just makes sure it goes behind for a corner. Not taking any risks there. Trying to hold on to it and spilling it free. Patrick Roberts to take the corner. List on for Ironside. Flicked away by Shagler. We've got Warman on the pitch as well. Not Warman. Uh, Morley on the pitch as well. Quilt. Lift it. Help it on its way. Well done. Shagler's on too. And it list is on his way. Give that to Shagler. Come on, Jonas. I mean, they're backing off. Oh! Jonas! Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. No, mate, that is not it. That is not it. Jonas Schädler might just be failing to quite meet the standards needed for a promotion fight in League One. And certainly will not quite be there or thereabouts if we get promotion. It's a 1-1 draw against Sunderland, which is a good recovery in a game against a side that really were very good indeed. Charlton win annoyingly. MK Dons did drop points, though, so the gap at the top will remain six. How much rating's dropping yet further? Like, come on, give me a break. Certainly don't deserve this at the minute. Burton Albion, bottom of the table. If this isn't three points, I'll eat my hat. Not wearing a hat, but thankfully I don't have to eat it. Ironside and Stone with the goals. A 2-0 win. Good. Right. The third and final game played today is against uh, Plymouth. But a transferist from Nottingham Forest for Elliot List. We are looking to sell him. He could potentially do a job for them in the championship. Although, brr, I don't know. I'll just accept it though, because we're not going to be able to get much more for him. That's going to be, hopefully, Elliot List out the door. Oh! Oh, 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 Charlton drop points on match day 30 as we sim and win. Charlton do not. Into second on goal difference. Automatic promotion spot assured, or acquired at least. And hopefully we can keep at least in the top two for the rest of the season. That's a great, great development, even if we haven't yet done much in the transfer window. Elliot List sold to Nottingham Forest. He decided to go to the city grounds rather than Ashton Gate. Two sides asking for his services that play in red and white. And he chose the one with, well, the, the one that's absolutely the bigger club with the richer history. That's for damn sure. You can't really blame anyone for picking Nottingham Forest over Bristol City. No offence to any Bristol City fans. I'm sure you would probably agree that Nottingham Forest are a bigger club than yours. I'd have no qualms in admitting that as a Cambridge United fan, that's for sure. Right, Plymouth up next. Oh, Oli Burke has completed his transition from left wing to striker. Keeps him at 71 for now, but certainly we're going to look to continue to train him moving forward in that position. Right, I am, I am contemplating selling Shadler as well in this window, but that might wait until the January window. Still waiting for some more scout reports. Cornick scout report not back yet. Nor Vale, nor Asgard, nor Morgan. The uh, start is continuing to scalp. We're not quite there yet. Vale looks like he's got good physicals. And technically looks very impressive too. Hello, Harvey Vale. How are you, young man? Uh, mm, not sure about Taylor Asgar. Uh, Connor Chaplin looks very good for that. Can roll at 5'6". Five 5'6". Foot six. Five foot six could certainly do a job. Could do a very good job, to be fair. Luke McCormick is better than I expected him to be. But his ball control isn't that good. Alex Scott, we already knew... Is pretty impressive. Patrick Roberts is 72, but perhaps not quite not quite the answer. Jack Rodoni, I really like the look of. I really like the look of Jack Rodoni. He's not quite the finished article, but at Cam, he could be really good. Ayub does look good statistically, but he's five foot four, and it's just not the way that I play, unfortunately. So I'm gonna remove him from the list. Uh, and Ogbene is pace, but mm, a real lack of technical ability. So I will remove him too. At present, I am thinking about signing Rudoni to play at Cam next season. But will be utilised out wide for the remainder of this season. 
And then maybe Alex Scott. Oh, is there are there basically there are too many good options. At five foot six, you'd say Connor Chapman would probably be better utilised out wide, but his crossing's only fifty seven and his short passing is only sixty seven. And at twenty six, he's not gonna grow as much as Jack Rodoni. Jack Rodoni's technicals aren't as impressive as some of the others, obviously. As we mentioned before, Patrick Roberts I will remove. Uh, I'll, I'll leave Connor Chaplin there for now. I've got I've got so many good options here that I could genuinely pick any of them. Harry Cornick is looking like he might be okay, but certainly I think McCormick or, or Rudoni would be the better options. McCormick is just not quite as good technically, is he? The ball at his feet is not going to be as impressive. Although his passing is better than Rudoni. But I'm not sure I can justify snapping up both of Wimbledon's, or two of Wimbledon's three attacking midfielders that we had on the, on the shortlist. Nor would I expect them to be willing to sell me both. One, perhaps, but two, no. I'm torn at the minute between Rodoni, Scott, Chaplin, and I'm waiting to see what happens with Morgan as well. Pinto, obviously, still the uh, young brain. Danny Alves regen. So there's plenty of options. I'm going to take a tet off the list now because I don't think he's going to be the go-to up top. To be fair, I'm quite happy at the minute with Oli Burke as my backup and... Um, Joey Ironside as my main striker. I mean, I could look to sell Shedler as well this window. But I don't want to gut the squad for the sake of gutting the squad. Because that might leave me less to do in the summer. And I want to make sure that each transfer window is meaningful. So let's go and play Plymouth. And then I will probably make the decision to bring one of those players on that shortlist in. But which one at the minute, I'm not sure. Plymouth in sixth and chasing us in those playoff spots. Marco Moroshi in goal for them. They've got Joe Edwards, Dan Scar, Macaulay Gillespie, James Bolton and Connor Grant at left wing back. Randall Houghton and Alfie Lewis in the midfield again. And Ennis and Jeffcott still their front two. Luke Jeffcott up to 72 rated now, so he's absolutely going to be one of the main threats for them. Joey Ironside continually second top goal scorer in the division with 15 now, but still... Not top of those charts. I'd love to get him closer with some goals in this third game today to try and help us maintain our second position in the league. Our goal difference is two or three better than Charlton's, I believe, at this moment in time. So if we can just get any sort of victory, then the points alone should be enough to keep us above them because our goal difference will remain better. But uh, I am going to have to make sure that we win this game. And Plymouth, of course, with the reason... Or the main reason why we didn't get promoted last season. Because they beat us in the bloody playoff semi-finals. He's offside there, I'm sure of it. Indeed he was. Cooper with a good save. But thankfully, he didn't necessarily need to make it. Gwilt with one clean sheet so far. But we weren't able to keep a clean sheet in the last game against Sunderland. But they were very, very good against us. Expecting a similar fight here in this Plymouth game. I'm going to try and take the game to them, though. I'm going to be aggressive on the front foot. Try and get the... The result we need. Is he onside there, Ollie Burke? I'm not sure. He's hit the bar and he was off as well. Bolton with the free kick. It's not the best. Jeff Cook challenging with Elijah Stone there. He's not the tallest, but able to get something on it. Brian intercepts that nicely. And into Conde. Conde to Chapman and forward to Ollie Burke. Have to look to Joey quickly, but he spun the man brilliantly. And he's got Burke on this left hand side. We're here to early to catch the keeper out, but Morosi is not to be caught out. Good save. By their number one. That's probably going to be keepers. He's not come for it. But Gillespie wins the header. Can Conde challenge for that? He was never really going to be favourite to rise highest and get to it. We've slowed Ennis down on the counter at least. But still Plymouth in possession. And still they look dangerous when trying to catch us on the counter attack from our own attacks. Edwards trying to get past Teddy Coles. Teddy trying his best but can't hold the man off. Cross comes in. Keeper's going to come for it this time. Ply uh, Plymouth's former goalkeeper of course. Cooper in the uh, sticks for us in this fixture so hopefully he can keep a clean sheet against his former team and help us get victory certainly we've had a lot of the ball and the majority of the chances as you can tell from those stats there a moment ago but still no ball definitively into the back of the net I just don't turns well Joey just needed to run the other side of the defender there I'm trying to be patient trying to make sure I play the right ball at the right time but 
getting the ball out wide like that has been an issue for me. There's a couple of times we've had the opportunity to play Lancaster in behind out wide and we've had the ball picked off by a very good interception, having to rely on some interceptions of our own in the final third too to keep Plymouth out here. It's been a very competitive, very even first 45. We conceded right on the brink of half time in the last game. We will not do that here. And I probably won't get the chance to go and score before half time, or will we? Oli Berkey's in behind. He's got Lancaster arriving at the back post. We'll look for Jack. Oh, but it's overhit. It's overhit. Brilliant chance on the counter attack, but we won't get the opportunity to see it through. Nil nil at half time. As Cambridge United go 1 nil down in real life to MK Dons. <laughs> Edwards nicely in there too. Not stood up. Draws the save out of Cooper. And they're pushing again here, Plymouth. They're making another change. It's Randall off and a change in the midfield for them. Danny Mayer, the man that comes on. That's lofted in well. It's won well, but not aimed very well. Bolton certainly rose highest above everybody else, but wasn't able to aim it on target. Similar to our effort in the first half from Jack Lancaster. Lancaster will find Stone here. Sorry, Chapman. Let's get that out wide quickly. MK Dons winning, but pegged back to 2-1. So, looks like they're going to be extending their lead over us at the top of the table if it stays as is, or at least maintaining it if we're able to find ourselves a goal to go in front. But at the minute, neither side actually looking likely to score the first goal in this game. Now, is he going to bring... Is he going to bring Shadler on and put Oli Burke into that cam roll and uh, see if we can get a bit more from Oli Burke centrally as that is where we're planning on utilising him moving forward in this save Horton picked off nicely by Conde oh, but caught in possession when he gets to that first he's done well he's turned nicely but then Horton won it back again I thought we'd done enough there to maintain possession and I was going to look to play in a teammate 12 minutes to go in this third and final game of the episode. And as it stands, I just couldn't call a winner. Here's Connor Grant. Good footwork. I'm going to try and get there with Josh Key. I caught the man. Didn't get anywhere near the ball. They'll take the advantage. Well, they indeed they will. It's a free kick for Plymouth here. Now my changes come into place. Shedler for Chapman. Away, please, Gwilt. That's not where I aimed it, but it was away at least. Josh Key does get it at the angle that I was aiming. Danny Mayer with a quick throw. Can I steal it off him? Not quite. Pressure on from Plymouth then at the end of the game. They're the ones that are looking for that late winner. Can Conde get to that? No, but they have misplaced the pass thanks to the pressure from Conde. And Shedler will look for Ollie Burke. He'll get it to Conde and Ironside. Brilliant ball for Lancaster. If he can isolate the number two here and dip inside, we could be in. Jack Lancaster draws the save out of Maroshi. Very nearly a late winner for us there. Elijah Stone will deliver the ball. It's coming towards the back of the box. Get to that, Jack. He's won it well. Gwilt is the man it will fall to. Burke. Lancaster. Early shot blocked. Burke will pick up the loose ball. We'll keep the pressure on. Looking through there for Shedler. Back to Conde. Across to Ollie Burke. Blocked again. Five at the back. It's just block shot simulator, isn't it? There's just never enough space to play a pass in behind. So you're forced to take a shot from distance. And then there's just too many men in the way. It's going to be a draw against Plymouth, but a draw against Plymouth is better than both of the playoff semi-final legs that we played out last season. So we are showing progress at least, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to keep us in the top two at the end of the January transfer window. We've still got some transfer business we want to get done, but I need to see the results from elsewhere. How did Charlton do? Charlton lost. We will we'll stay above them, but do we stay above everyone else? I'm not sure what the gap was like elsewhere. Blackpool are the team that now fill that second spot. We're only a point behind them, though. Six now behind MK Dons as they were able to see out victory against Mansfield in their game. But it's still close enough to challenge for that title. Still very much close enough to challenge for the automatic promotion spot. But still equally close enough for uh, those below us to challenge us for the playoff spots as well. A bid for Morgan from Leganes, which at the moment I will turn down. I am potentially open to selling Morgan, but only if we're able to find an alternative option in our youth setup to bring through someone else. And to be honest, at the minute, I think I'm going to stick with Morgan for the time being. It's not an area I'm looking to change things. Right, final scout reports are back, which is great. Taylor Asgar, not really good enough. So we will uh, remove him from the shortlist and remove the report. 
Uh, Harvey Vale, 73 rated, does look 80 finishing. <laughs> we'll potentially try and get him on loan at some point in this save. He's probably too far above us with regards to his ability at the minute. Harry Cornick's just not good enough, I don't think, there. And Morgan Rogers is one I'm really intrigued about. £11 million valuation, 75 rated. He's just too good for us at the minute. Too good for us. I'm not sure if he's playing every week for Bournemouth as well. I think he's getting first-team football IRL at Bournemouth, although I believe he's on loan from Manchester City. That's what I was led to believe by chat. Anyway, indeed, he is on loan at Bournemouth from Manchester City, but... That deal went through uh, in the summer, and it's actually registered as a permanent move, unless they had an option to buy, which I'm not aware of where they wouldn't have done, because that's not in FIFA, is it, with the signings at the very beginning of a save. Biggest dealings so far in this save, in this uh, this window, Yuri Tielemans to Manchester City from Villarreal, Lucas Paqueta to Inter Milan from Lyon, and, oh, actually, that was only the second one for Tielemans. The biggest so far is Jamal Musiala to Real Sociedad from Bayern Munich. So, my decision with regards what to do with these players in the roles we've got them in at the minute. I'm still waiting on a scout report from Lewis Morgan. We're just going to have to... Uh, we're just going to have to wait if we are going to sign him. I am really tempted to get Rudoni in. Really tempted to get Rudoni in. He's not the finished article yet and certainly would need some work. But I think he's a player I want, even if we'd have to utilise him in a position that he's not that strong in currently, I think I'd like to get him in now as he's a player I think could progress with us for a while here at the club. I will offer a transfer fee of about valuation. Obviously, Wimbledon in our division... Uh, they want a 20% sell-on clause. That's not a problem. Quite happy to pay the fee as well. You'll notice my transfer budget is slightly lower than it was last time you saw it. I did spend some money on a new scout as well. Full first-team scout, not youth scout. Radoni is on six grand a week. We can certainly afford those wages. I would be looking to move him and play him out wide to get him into the starting lineup at the beginning of his time here at the club. But I am aiming... Probably to move him into Cam and drop Chapman back to central midfield at the end of this season as Conde's future is in question, of course, at the moment uh, with him being one of those free agent players that we brought in. £7,000 a week. I probably could have offered him about four and a half, and he would have accepted it, but we'll get him on seven. That should hopefully see him not needing a boost at any point for the remainder of the the his time here at the club, at least in those early stages. Gwilt up to 70 rated, you'll notice, to growth from him as well. My manager rating is just plummeting, and I just can't figure out why. Like, I can easily go out and do that youth defender one. We've done the brand exposure one. We're going to do the short-term financial one. Just because I'm not top of the table, my manager rating is all over the place. I'll have to have a look through the squad and see if there's someone that's Un, unusually low on morale that's potentially affecting everything. But at the minute, I don't really know what I'm doing wrong, to be honest, to have the board in such a position. A bid for Lloyd-Jones from Lantos Saguna. I'm not looking to sell Lloyd-Jones at the moment, nor would a Mexican side be interested in a second string League One English centre-back. So quite happy to, uh, to turn that down. There's a deal that I didn't think we'd see. Pedri leaves Barcelona, comes to Aston Villa for £115.7 million. The biggest deal of this window so far. Not, though, the biggest deal of the save in this uh, season so far. £128 million saw uh, Leon Goretzka come to England. No further bids at present for anyone in our squad, but that's as we expected it to be. Still no interest in Chapman. For those that continually say, Chapman's too high rated, you shouldn't have him, da 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 Yes, his rating is high, but he's never been so much better than everybody else in my squad that it, he stood out. Nor, anyone really shown any interest in him, so he's not that good. He can't be that good. Right, I am going to take Burke out and put him on the bench for Holland. I tried to loan Holland out, but nobody seemed to be that interested in him, unfortunately. And we will put Rudoni in on that left-hand side. 
play him as a left mid for the time being. He's right footed. We will retrain him. He's only got 31 fitness at the moment, as you can see. We will retrain him as a left mid or add that to his uh, to his positional options. Next for us, tomorrow then, in the next episode. A uh, busy-ish day with Northampton, Hull, Wigan, Shrewsbury and Wickham. Five games to be uh, to be negotiated. Four of which... Uh, oh, sorry, three of which we shall play. Two of which we shall sim. I'm happy enough with that window, to be honest. We get a loan offer for Ben Warman from Elche. Which is not something we're interested in looking into. Uh, now, we're not overly fussed about either of these two at the moment. Considering the nature of uh, the fact that we've now got Gwilt up from the, uh, from the youth setup. So... We will start tomorrow third, but we're very much in the hunt for that promotion automatically rather than just via the playoffs. Uh, we started off a little bit wobbly at the beginning of the month, but thankfully they were both cup games. And in the league, we're able to put together continually an unbeaten run. Our league unbeaten run stretches all the way back to MK Dons in November. So very pleased with our league form at the minute. Pleased with the draw against Sunderland, frustrated with the draw against Plymouth, but good results tomorrow. And we should fly up the table into second again, we hope. I'm still frustrated at the border. So annoyed at me, which is just... Why? Well, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Let's have a quick look then, see if there's anybody here. But this is going to be a no. And that's going to be a no. Is there anything from Mr. Hogg so far today? Mm, don't know. We'll wait and see. Definitely not. That's definitely not. Where are my million pound players again, please? We might end up having to spend some money on another youth scout as we end this season. I might try and spend some of the money I've got left over and buy a third top quality youth scout for hopefully what will be a, uh, a championship season for us next year. I'd like to try and find a goalkeeper via the uh, the youth scouts. I can't afford a five-star, five-star. We certainly could afford a four-star, five-star, which would utilise the rest of the budget and would fulfil the board's objective. So... Okay, really happy with how we're going so far this season, even if the board are a little bit suspicious. Which is a bit out of, bit unfair on me, I think, so far. We're having a very good season. We're very much in the, the hunt for this second automatic promotion spot and only six points off top. So, screw you, board, I think, is the response from me at this particular moment in time. But drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any further content here on the Chesnoy Gaming YouTube channel. This series, of course, comes to you, uh, this series, of course, comes to you every single day. Uh, there is my player footage going up on Facebook every single weekday. So check the channel page for or check the Facebook page for that link in the description. And of course, we stream this series live and do the recording over there. So if you want to come across and have an impact live or just see some of the behind the scenes, then there's a link to the Twitch channel in the description down below. But that is all for now for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.